Yo, what's up? Summer is finally here. I moved to a different city and I started working at a new job. And all of this calls for an update video about my current EDC back setup. If you've watched my last on-body EDC update video, you already know that the name of the game for the summer is downsizing and trimming off any excess that isn't totally necessary. So for this setup, the wonderful folks over at Nutsack Bag Company were nice enough to send me two of their bags, the Max Satchel 11 and the Satchel 13. And one of them has ended up becoming my new daily driver. This video is not supposed to be a review of these bags, but I will spend some time to give you the reasons behind my decision to choose something like this as my summer EDC bag. If you just want to see what I carry, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps in the description, no hard feelings. I have by now used it for over 6 weeks in my day to day life and taken it to France and the Netherlands on some short trips. So even though 6 weeks might not sound like a lot, I still think that I have enough experience with this bag to talk about it in depth. The bag I ended up choosing as my daily carry is the Max Hatch 11. While both bags are very similar in terms of materials and overall appearance, the Max Hatch 11 turned out to be the more practical one out of the two for my use case. First of all, the reason for me to switch from carrying a backpack, as you've seen me do for most of my other EDC bag videos, to a satchel style bag, was in part to force me to cut down on the amount of crap that I carry with me on a daily basis. As you might have seen in previous EDC bag videos, I have no issues filling up a 20 liter backpack to the brim, and if I had more space I would always find more stuff to carry. My goal with this bag was to force me to only pack the stuff that I would actually need, and thereby lightening the load, so to speak. The reason behind that was in part simply because it's easier and less fatiguing to carry less weight and also, not having a backpack pressed up against my back avoids building up that sweat. I sweat like nobody's business on my back when carrying a backpack in the summer heat, no matter how good the ventilation system is. But since I don't need to pack layers upon layers of clothing in case of changes in weather, I can cut down on the size of my back considerably for the summertime and that's what I did. The key though was obviously to cut down the amount of stuff without leaving anything important at home. In other words, if I ended up discovering at every turn that something I used to have with me all the time is now missing and I could really use that in that moment, well, that's just bad times and somewhat negates what I'm actually setting out to achieve with this experiment. So, now that you know my thoughts behind the setup, let's get into it. The Max Hatch 11 is, as the name suggests, sized so that it would just fit an 11 inch tablet. I decided not to carry my iPad on a regular basis though, since I rarely ever have a need to use it while I'm on the go these days. So that's more room for other stuff that might actually come in handy on a more regular basis. Also, while talking about the size of this bag, it's probably a good time to talk about the fact that yes, this is a man bag. There's no getting away from it, and of course, I did get some shit from my colleagues at work. Also, when we were visiting my girlfriend's mom and my girlfriend got out of the car holding this, her mother actually thought that this was her new purse. And well, I gotta be honest, that kind of made me question my decision, but at the end of the day, I decided to stick with it. The bag in and of itself is, in my opinion, also designed and made in such a way that it doesn't come across as overly feminine. It's made out of waxed heavy duty canvas with leather accents and metal hardware everywhere. So aside from its size, it actually looks very rugged. Another point that drove me to use this instead of the Satchel 13 is the lack of that leather clothing strap. While I will admit that the 13 looks better than the 11 and that is at least in part due to that small piece of leather, I prefer the 11 just in terms of its functionality. Both bags have magnets under the latch to keep them closed, even if you leave the zipper open so you could just leave that leather strap hang there and not close it properly without any issue. But this is where my OCD kicks in. I simply can't deal with this dangling around not being fully closed at all times. If I would however decide to close it, that would take more time and make it more difficult to access it one handed. It's still possible, don't get me wrong, but with me reaching in there for my face mask and other stuff all the time, this was just a tiny bit more of a hassle than it is on the 11. But please, realize that I'm saying this as someone who has both and who was leaning more towards using the Max Hatch 11 anyway. I don't think at all that this is a bad feature on the 13, in fact, as already mentioned, I think it makes the 13 look more attractive. And even though I have now chosen the Max Hatch 11 as my daily carry, I still switched out for the 13 on a regular basis. But the 11 is also available with that leather strap, if you really like that kind of thing. With all that out of the way, here's what's actually inside the bag. Let's start with the front. 
There is a zipper under that flap that is protected by another small rind flap and covers the whole width of the bag. In that flat pocket I currently keep my cotton face mask, which we currently have to wear to be allowed to enter any store or restaurant. And also, I do carry some emergency instant coffee sticks in there, just in case, you know. Open the main zipper and you see the main dump compartment, as well as another zippered pocket in the rear and two stitched pockets in the front. In those front pockets I carry a small thing of sunscreen, my DJI Osmo Action, a spare battery for my camera and a bottle of hand sanitizer. The DJI Osmo Action has replaced my previous camera, the GoPro Hero 4 Session, which was sweet but didn't feature any stabilization and had comparatively shitty image quality by today's standards. I don't do many vlogs on this channel, but I have been filming and making vlogs, especially while on holiday, for years in my personal life. I have video reaching back to the early 2000s, when I was less than 10 years old, and this is an awesome way in my opinion to save those memories. The DJI Osmo Action is a no-nonsense camera that doesn't get in the way and is not too obtrusive. I don't need a gigantic camera setup to film my holidays in the best quality possible, I would rather have something that is rugged and unembarrassing so that I actually end up using it while I'm out and about. So DJI Osmo Action it is. Also, this is where I keep my Bluetooth in-ear headphones, which are the Skull Candy Indie in black. I have toyed with the idea of buying the AirPod Pros after they were released, but both my father and my sister had these from Skull Candy and recommended them to me. And I must say, no regrets. They sound fantastic, cost only a fraction of the AirPod Pros and have a very nice natural rubber seal to keep the noise out even without active noise cancellation. Also, they come in matte black, which is always appreciated. In the rear zipper, I carry a foldable bag in case I end up buying something while on the go, as well as a pack of paper tissues, a 10,000 mA power bank and some wet wipes. Now for the big ticket items. My EDC camera of choice in here is the Fuji X100V. As mentioned earlier, this has replaced my Fuji X100F and while it's not perfect, and actually worse in some capacities, it's still a worthwhile upgrade and just like I did with the X100F, I have now fallen in love with this camera as well. Everything from its looks to how it feels and the pictures you can take with it is just outstanding. Part of me still thinks about upgrading to a Leica Q2, but that's a story for another time. For now though, I'm absolutely happy to have this and enjoy using it every chance I get. Since the lockdown is slowly being reversed, I'm looking forward to maybe exploring some new cities around the area I recently moved into. Next up is my EDC pouch. This is a Maxpedition micro pouch. On the outside, I have these USB Type-A and USB Type-C flash drive, which came from a Victoria Knox jet setter. Open it up and you'll find all kinds of small items that help me make my day a bit easier. So we got the Leatherman Juice S2 as my compact motor tool of choice, an asthma spray just in case, and behind that a lightning SD card reader dongle. On the left, we got cables for days. First, USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable with a lightning port adapter, my trusty OLED M1T radar with a micro USB rechargeable, 16340 as my trusty backup flashlight, and two more cables, another USB Type-C to USB Type-C and a regular micro USB charging cable. Behind those are my USB-C dongle with all kinds of useful ports and functions as well as a 500GB USB Type-C RAV power SSD. Tons of utility for a small pouch. Moving on, you'll find my sunglasses of choice which are the Chris Square by Ray-Ban. I bought these 5 years ago, got a pair stolen, lost another, so this is my third pair now. I love them, would recommend them. All the way to the right you'll find my bottle of choice, which is the 350ml grey insulated milky bottle by 720 degrees. It holds a good amount of fluid to keep you hydrated, mostly water in my case, but every now and then you know, when I feel fancy, I might actually fill that bad boy up with cold green tea or cold brew coffee. With this being an insulated bottle, it manages to keep cold drinks cold for a long time, even on the hottest of days. Good stuff. But anyway, that's what I carry in my EDC bag. If you are interested in anything I've shown in this video, I have tried to link most of the stuff in the description down below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and also let me know what you think about the whole man bag situation. Another thing I want to quickly mention is the naming scheme. I don't mind it at all, I actually think it's quite funny. Since I don't use this for work, I have no fear that this might raise any eyebrows or draw any unwanted attention. But even if I did use this for work, the chance of somebody here in Germany seeing that tag and actually making the mental leap to get to a point where this might seem offensive is slim to none. So I think it's funny and nobody else even notices. You can however also get that logo without the company's name. And that's it for this video. 
Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more EDC related content. Take care.